However, Jean Robert has something that I typically do not at the poker table, and that is his goblet prop. When you bring a goblet prop to the poker table, and you make good use of it, your opponents are naturally going to think that you are playing way more loosely and way more splashy than you actually are. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Lowell for PokerCoaching.com, here today going over a hand from High Stakes Poker. We have a fun one today featuring Tom Dwan. You all know Tom Dwan. He is the legend of the High Stakes cash games over the last 10 or 15 years. He gets in there, he battles, he splashes, and his opponent today is going to be Jean Robert Balland. If you've ever seen Jean Robert Balland play, he always comes prepared with his goblet. Because why wouldn't you bring a goblet to the poker table? In this hand, we're playing 200, 400, 1600 on high stakes poker. Make sure you check out the episodes of high stakes poker on Poker Go. Tom Dwan, loose splash aggressive, uh, aggressive player, decides to raise it up with the king four parts under the gun. This is the uh, third take of this video. I've had, this is the third goblet. All right, Tom Dwan opens it up. King four of hearts. Fine, do whatever you want. Folds around to Jean Bear on the button with ace, two of diamonds. This is a great hand to splash around playing 100-something big blinds effective deep. Um, we are playing 400, 800, 1600. So even though Jean Bear has a whopping $190,000 in front of him, which is, you know, the value of a small house or a very, very nice car, it's only 100-something big blinds. He likes to call with the ace, two of diamonds, which is fine. Bryn Kenny folds. Rick Solomon decides to call pocket tens in the small blind. You can three bet, you can call, you can do whatever you want. And Brandon Steven in the straddle ops to call a queen five of clubs. Sure. All right. Flop comes. Ace, ace, king, giving Tom Dwan a pair of kings and giving Jean Robert three aces. How many goblets have you had? Do you know which of those hands is better? A pair of kings or three aces? Three aces is good. Jean Robert is going to win this pot almost certainly. Rick Solomon checks his tens, which are now pretty junky. Brandon Steven checks. And Tom Dwan makes a small bet. Interesting scenario. Interesting scenario for Jean Robert. Because facing a small bet, you're always tempted to raise. But if you raise in this scenario, what's going to happen to all those hands that you beat? Are they going to give you action or are they going to fold? I want you to think about this spot. And I want you to pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. Would you fold because you're afraid? Don't do that. Would you call the 5,000? Would you raise small to about 12,000? Or would you raise big to about 25,000? All right, did you do it? Good. Going through this active learning process is gonna go a long way to ensuring that you are thinking about poker and working hard to improve your skills. And in my training site, pokercoaching.com, we have thousands of interactive quizzes where you have to say what you would do and then you would get feedback in real time about whether your answer was good or bad. And it turns out if you make better decisions than your opponents, you'll win money in the long run. We actually just released a brand new, very in-depth spin and go course. These are very, very fun, exciting, three-handed tournaments. And we have an in-depth course by one of the best high-stakes spin and go players in the world and also quizzes to ensure that you know what you're doing. Make sure you check that out at pokercoaching.com slash spin. In this scenario, I think the ace two has a pretty easy call because the main concern here is just not getting stacked when you happen to be against a better hand. And there are a lot of better hands available. Notice that a lot of your opponents will play many aces, especially in this loose, splashy game. It's very easy for someone to even have like ace eight offsuit. So even though Jean Bear's trip aces is very, very strong, the way you survive in this game is to not lose gigantic pots and raising opens yourself up losing to a gigantic pot in exchange for making some hands out of equity, folding. And John Robert does make the call, which I like. Rick Solomon pocket tens elects to splash around too. Um, I think this is reasonable. You do have to be a little bit careful that when we are playing very deep stack that you don't run into ace king or pocket kings or ace 10 when you spike that 10 because then you're going to be on the hook for losing a lot of money. So I think if I was in Rick Solomon's shoes, I would have just folded, but I, I get calling. It's it's reasonable. Brandon Steven folds his air ball. Turn is another king. This spells certain doom for Tom Dwan. The only question is, how many 
cars is he going to lose? Rick Solomon checks. Tom Dwan, I think, has a very easy check here. If he bets, what's going to get him action, right? He's going to get called by an ace, and everything else is going to fold. So easy check for Tom Dwan. And now, Jean Robert has to figure out how much value he can extract. And it's kind of tough here, because really, if you bet, what's going to give you action? If either of your opponent has a king, they're in a pretty marginal spot. And if they have queen high or worse, they're just obviously going to fold. Notice Rick Solomon here has pocket tens, but he has ace, ace, king, king, ten, so he has ten high. It's not a good hand. So... I actually think Jean Robert should probably check here. However, Jean Robert has something that I typically do not at the poker table, and that is his goblet prop. When you bring a goblet prop to the poker table and you make good use of it, your opponents are naturally going to think that you are playing way more loosely and way more splashy than you actually are. And Jean Robert actually does a pretty good job of being involved in the table talk, being involved in the action, despite not really putting a ton of money in the pot unless he has a very good hand. So I think he does a really good job with this, of making it seem like he's giving a lot of action, whereas in reality he only gives a little bit of action, which is really good poker if you think about it. And for that reason, I think Jean Robert should probably bet, and probably bet medium size because I don't think anyone with a king is going to fold to him. And for all I know, maybe like Queen High decides to splash around. Probably not, but maybe. So if I was in his shoes, I'd probably bet 15 or 20,000 just to try to get value from a king. And that is what he does. 10 high folds. And Tom Dwan's in a pretty nasty spot already. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? I think, I think you got to you got to stick around against someone who you actually think is playing loose and splashy and aggressive. All right, Rivers of Jacket Clubs, Tom Dwan checks, as he certainly should. And now Jean Robert has to figure out how much can get called by a king. How much do you think can get called by a king? Well, to test your skills, I actually have a free quiz for you to take on exploiting your opponents in cash games. Check this out right now at pokercoaching.com slash cash quiz. There I have lots of questions to see how you are actively thinking and exploiting your opponents. And this is a spot where... Jean Robert is either going to make a lot of equity or almost no equity. What a lot of people do wrong in this spot is they think, okay, I have a really good hand, so I'm going to bet big. But they're not really thinking about what they're trying to get called by. And they're not concerned with who their opponent is. And in this scenario, Jean Robert is clearly trying to get called by a king, right? Tom Dewan's range makes a whole lot of sense that he would have a king. Um, he probably doesn't have pocket kings. That's super unlikely, right? And so how much will Tom Dewan call with a king? And some of your opponents in your games will call a big bet, like a pot size bet with a king, because they're calling stations, or they think, ooh, full house, high up on the hand ranking chart, can't fold. But in reality, anyone who's competent knows this is just a bluff catcher, and it's kind of hard for Jean Robert to be bluffing. So I think the right size here for Jean Robert is actually a small one. And one other thing worth mentioning that Jean Robert actually discusses in his table talk after this hand is that whenever you give a math guy, someone who, well, studies math, like myself, like a lot of you, when you give the math guys good odds, they just find a call every time. And that is what Jean Robert does. He makes a 20,000 bet, doing his best to ensure that math guy Tom Dwan finds a call. And after he made this bet, Tom, de Tom said, damn it, Robert, why do you have to do this to me? How big is that glass? How much wine is in there? With that stupid wine glass, he thinks he's going to get a donation from me, meaning he thinks I'm going to get me to call. Tom Dwan thinks it over. And of course he calls because <laughs> he's a math guy and he pays off Jean Robert and gives him $20,000, one small car. And, you know, I think Jean Robert played this hand great. Got to give the guy credit for that. There's a lot of skill in creating a loose, splashy gambling image, having a party, being broke Jean repair, travel to play Survivor, come play poker. You know, I don't have any money. I just seem to win every time I play. Jean Robert's doing it right. I, I like the way he rolls. So Jean Robert wins a nice pot and scoop -a loops the money. That's me at four today. I hope you enjoyed this hand. If you did, do me a quick favor. Click the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, click the notification bell so that you are made aware of all of the new content I have available for you here on YouTube. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. I'll talk to you next time.